Dr. Joe here with client Mitch. He has frozen shoulder and he had a question about it. Mitch, can you ask me what you just did? Yeah, so I throw a ball with both arms. My right arm seems to move my left arm and it feels like my shoulder blade's locked and it goes that way. So there's a very good reason to, for this and it's exactly what frozen shoulder is. Mitch, do me a favor, stand right here and face directly that way. So see how as he goes up, it gets sticky and he's going to start to shrug through here. And if he tries to go higher, he's going to shrug even more. Go ahead and rest that down. So the way the shoulder works is it's a ball and socket. So we've got the ball being his glenohumeral joint, and it's going to sit in this socket. As he raises his arm, it's going to go up, and the ball is going to go toward the roof of this socket. Somewhere around 80 degrees, roughly where he's at, that ball is going to get to the top of the socket. And a normal healthy shoulder, the thing that happens next is that ball slides down. When it slides it down, and I'm going to show Mitch this, as you go up, this slides it down. It gives you more room between the roof and allows the arm to keep going higher up. Frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis, by definition, that ball is not moving. That's why they call it frozen. So as he goes up, that ball gets stuck at the very top. It gets stuck against this thing in what's called the subacromial space. Now, as humans, we're trained to compensate. So what's going to happen is his shoulder blade is going to go up to allow him to get his arm as high as possible. So this can happen with any shoulder injury, especially frozen shoulder, where that ball is not going to move. So when Mitch does his rehab, you can go ahead and turn around. He's going to work a bunch of different motions, and the focus is to get that ball to spin in the socket. So he'll do things like external rotation and internal rotation, and it's going to get that ball to spin in the socket. It's going to get the rotator cuff to help stabilize it, because in the end, when the shoulder is functioning normally, the rotator cuff actually takes that ball and drives it down as the hand goes up. When that happens in concert with the shoulder blade moving upward and aiming that socket up, we get an arm that's full and overhead versus one that's running into that top place and getting stuck. Makes sense. In a lot of shoulder injuries, we can make that happen fairly quickly. Frozen shoulder is different. We kind of have to let the body go through a healing process. So we're going to work on making that stuff happen, but it's going to go a little bit at its own pace. If you're at home just having a cranky, uncomfortable shoulder, sometimes you can fire that rotator cuff working on the spinning motion, and it'll actually immediately get better. So Mitch is a golfer, so this obviously gets in the way of his swing, both backswing and downswing. So as that shoulder opens up, we're going to work the swing. We're going to make sure he gets his upper body and hips rotating as well to take some stress off that shoulder. I think there's a pretty good chance he can get back out there this spring. As long as he keeps up with his progress. Let's go. If you got questions, leave them in the comments.